great MLYMYC. That's Margaret Lomas with Your Money, Your Call. Welcome back to Switzer. I'm Helen Daly, sitting in tonight for Peter. Well, it's no secret that we are living longer, but Australia's ageing population brings with it a number of challenges. The biggest could be ensuring that there are enough savings to provide for people in their retirement. To combat this rising cost, the government has recently approved a gradual increase to the superannuation guarantee from the current 9% to end up at 12% by 2020. But who will wear the cost and what are the implications for employees, businesses and taxpayers? To answer these questions, I'm joined by Steve Schubert, the Client Manager, Leader at Mercer. Steve, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Helen. Now, broadly speaking, do you think increasing the mandatory superannuation guarantee to end up at 12% is a good move or a bad move? Look, I think it's a very important move for individual Australians and for our economy as a whole. Australians are living longer and if we want to maintain our standard of living in retirement, we need to save more and we need to save for longer. OK, so what are the benefits, firstly, to employees to have the superannuation guarantee move up to these levels? Well, in, primarily it means that we'll be able to enjoy a higher standard of living in retirement. Living standards have been increasing in Australia for a number of years, but if we want to maintain those living standards after we've retired, then we really need to be uh, putting aside more while we're working for the long period that most of us will spend in retirement. The fundamental increase will be that employees will have a one third higher contribution going into their superannuation account, but in practice that will translate probably to more like about 40% increase going into their uh, savings account because some of the fixed costs like insurance and administration fees won't increase when the 9% goes to 12%. OK, so for, for younger people, that's got to be a great boon for their super when they end up perhaps, you know, three or four decades hence. Sure, that's right, Helen, but it's never too late. You know, you have to start saving at some point, and a large number of Australians haven't had the benefit of a full career of superannuation, so this will help a lot of them uh, at least partially catch up uh, to, uh, to have some sort of reasonable savings in retirement and a reasonable retirement income. And I suppose the benefits overall for the economy and for the community in general is that it will increase the retirement savings pool and at the same time it reduces our reliance on the age pension. That's right Helen, we have an ageing population and so fundamentally we've had lower birth rates over the last 30 or 40 years and what that means is the number of people who are going to be in retirement and therefore more likely to be drawing on government resources rather than paying taxes will increase uh, relative to the number of people in the workforce paying taxes. So that means there will be more pressure on, uh, on governments to be able to provide these benefits. So the more we can save now uh, to help people uh, fund their own retirement or at least partially fund their own retirement, the more uh, uh, easy it's going to be for future governments to afford the age pension. Yeah, and certainly future generations who won't be, uh, you know, who are, who are shrinking in number compared to the baby boomers who are getting older and will use their super. Absolutely, that's right. We can't push this burden onto future generations. We have to fund it now, um, and, and this is one way of doing it. The other aspect of the ageing population is that we are living longer. You referred to that earlier, and that means we're going to spend more time in retirement. So we need to be saving for longer. We need to be saving more to fund that. In the period since the superannuation guarantee was first introduced in 1992, the average 65-year-old is now can expect to live four years longer. So that's a pretty big increase over only just 20 years. Yeah, Steve, do you say that people should uh, keep putting into their super, quite apart from the superannuation guarantee, but should keep contributing if they can, or should they pay off their mortgage first and then put it into super? Look, superannuation is a great way to save, but obviously paying down your debt is another way of saving. So people need to have a balance, and I think most people can manage to, uh, to, to get that balance right between savings, and that's where compulsory savings like superannuation is good, um, and paying off their mortgage. No one wants to get to retirement uh, with a big debt. But at some point, you have to uh, clear your debt and get actual savings in, the, uh, in your account 
ready for your retirement. Of course, superannuation has been scaring a lot of people in the last few years because the, you know, most of the funds have done so poorly after the GFC. So uh, do you think there would be a natural reluctance now to uh, put more money into super as things aren't going so well in stock markets? Look, we've seen a little bit of that, Helen, but interestingly, the Mercer Superannuation Sentiment Index, this is a survey where we survey over a 1,000 uh, Austra working Australians about their retirement plans, uh, and, this, and the Sentiment Index has been gradually increasing. It's now higher than it was at, at, its, uh, at its peak just before the GFC. So we're seeing increased confidence in uh, retirement savings amongst Australians, uh, greater confidence in the system. Obviously, the increase in the superannuation guarantee will help. Uh, help that for, for employees and if anyone can afford to save a little bit extra over and above the uh, minimum guaranteed amount then that's a good thing. Well how fair is this system of government support for retirement because it's often said that super benefits high income earners but your firm that survey that you're talking about is saying that it's fair across the range of incomes. How did they come to that conclusion? Sure, Helen. Look, there's no doubt that for while you're working uh, and saving for superannuation, uh, higher income earners will generally get higher tax concessions. But what happens when people get into retirement is that the reverse is true. High income earners can rarely expect to get a full age pension or any age pension at all, whereas lower income earners will be protected by the age pension safety net. So what we found was it was a remarkably similar amount of government support for retirees across low income earners, people earning less than the average weekly age, right through to very high income earners. It seemed to average out at around $400,000 across the working life and retirement period of an average Australian. So, sorry, and that didn't seem to matter much. Can you just explain what you mean by the 400000 So when, when I put a superannuation, pay a contribution to superannuation, that is an alternative to getting that money as salary. So obviously uh, there's a tax benefit for me if right. I'm paying more than 15%. More than but when I get to retirement, the government will pay me an age pension if, I'm, uh, if, if my income is not high enough. So when you add those two effects together, what you find is that higher income earners get a bigger tax break during their working lives, but lower income earners get more of a benefit during their retirement phase. So you tend to even out over that yeah, period. Yeah, they're fairer. It's, fa it's fair across the board. If you look at the entire period of someone's both working life and retirement, that's right. All right, let's just get back to the superannuation guarantee and this rise, the gradual rise to 12%. Um, what are the implications for businesses? Because I think many people are still confused. Will business wear the cost of the increase in the super guarantee or will it essentially be in exchange for wage increases over that sort of eight year period? Look, that's an age-old debate, Helen. We live in a modern uh, economy and businesses will seek to minimise their costs so that they can maintain their competitiveness and their profitability. Uh, and workers and the unions that represent them will seek to increase living standards. So there's always going to be some fo form of trade-off. And I think the best way to look at this is to go back to the period from 1992 to 2002 when the superannuation guarantee first came in. It came in for most businesses at 3% and then tracked pretty steadily up to 9% over a 10 year period. Now if you look back over the, that period you could never actually determine how much of that increase in superannuation was a result of lower than expected wages, wage increases and how much was due to lower than expected uh, profits. Uh, you know, we, it, It's really a dynamic effect and over that period real wages increased and the economy grew in real terms. So the net effect uh, is really too difficult to measure. Yeah, so in a sense though, are you saying that business doesn't actually pay for it out of their pocket, it comes as everything grows? Well that's, that's, that's right Helen, that's right. So um, you know, over time prices increase, wages increase and the economy grows, we get productivity improvements, all those things impact a, a modern thriving economy like Australia's and so individual changes like a quarter of a percent of salary increase in the superannuation guarantee, which is what we're going to see in 2013, really have quite a small impact overall. That's right, because it is quite gradual, isn't it? Until 2020, was I right about that year? Yes, so, so it cut, the final year it cuts in is the 2019-2020 right. tax year, that's right. Yeah, okay. So just 
Can you explain to us, Steve, the, uh, the mining tax, which, you know, we've heard talk that it is going to uh, contribute some of the money, from the revenue from the mining tax will go to the superannuation guarantee. What part of it will it pay? Look, I, I don't think you can actually break out a specific component. So um, the government linked the superannuation guarantee in increase to the uh, mining resources rent tax. They both went through the Senate on the 19th of March. So they've both worked their way into law. Um, in the end, the mining tax may help the government fund other tax changes. One important change, for example, that the government's going to introduce is a reduction in, this, in the tax that low-income earners pay on superannuation. Low-income earners earning essentially less than about $37,000 a year will no longer pay tax on their superannuation contributions in the hands of the, of the superannuation fund. They'll effectively get a rebate. And that's one of the things, for example, that's going to be funded by the, uh, uh, the, the resource rent tax. Right. Steve, there are benefits then, clearly, long term, to the taxpayer. Yes. Well, as we said before, Helen, you know, funding tomorrow's retirement benefits today uh, is good management. You know, that's the way we tend to run our own household budgets. We run a little bit of debt, but we like to, uh, to have things uh, put away before we make big expenditures. And it's the same with uh, the age pension. We need to start funding, to funding retirement benefits for tomorrow's retirees today. Steve, what's Mercer's interest in all this? Because you're a very big company and you handle super four companies. Sure. So, so we, uh, we're a, a, a global provider of consulting, outsourcing and investment services. We provide those services to, uh, to companies in respect to their employees. We provide them to superannuation funds and we do provide services to individuals. We've been in this uh, business for you know, well over 50 years, so as our, our heritage goes back that far. So we've been doing this since before superannuation became compulsory or even fashionable. Um, so you know, obviously we're determined to make sure that we help individuals, whether they be employees of our, uh, of our company clients, whether they be members of our industry fund, superannuation funds, or whether they be individual investors, to help them plan for retirement, uh, to save for retirement and to invest for retirement. All right, Steve Schubert, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Helen. And if you want to read Peter Switzer's thoughts each morning as you wake up at the close of Wall Street, do check out his website, switzer.com.au. If you want to get his thoughts on super, visit switzersuperreport, all one word, .com.au.